Since the reception of House of the Dragon Season 2 was chaotic to say the least, I thought it would be fun to try and decipher random IMDb user reviews and determine what episode they are from. And since I can't actually do that by myself like the introvert I am, I got the queen of the Game of Thrones content creators, Glidas. Hi. Hi. So we'll go back and forth for 10 rounds, trying to figure out the episodes from the reviews, and the one twist that will keep us on our toes is that one review will be from something completely random that isn't related to Hot D. So, if it's in all caps, should we be yelling the com- or the quote <laughs> slash review? <laughs> that is one We're off to a great start. <laughs> Deal is choice, I guess. From Chris Lichen. Nobody asked or wanted blank. Help. I literally cried. This was not necessary. They also give the episode a 10 out of 10, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I, my gut reaction is it's uh, the gay kiss at the end of episode six. Oh, That's just like where my mind immediately goes to when I see like a, a huge capital letter rant about uh, <laughs> something people didn't want in House of the Dragon. That'd be reasonable. It was jarring. It could also be, you know, a character's death that this person wasn't looking forward to or, you know, specifically a child's death. So it could be episode one. He did literally but cry. <laughs> Yeah, I think that crying at a child's death is more reasonable than crying at a gay kiss. But then again, these are IMDb user reviews and being reasonable isn't really, you know, the name of the game here. Yeah, all these will be irrational. So I I will stick to my guns and be embarrassed by sticking to episode six. That would be correct. Oh, baby. Cool. All right. So I have a review for you. Of an, an episode of House of the Dragon Season 2. Are you ready? Yeah. It's from user TigerMail-LB and it's titled, Why is this episode like a time drag on? Do you get it? It's like a pun. Drag on? Dragon? That, that's creative. <laughs> Pretty funny. Ahem. <clears throat> Why did Damon stuff up the assassination attempt? Poor writing given the serious nature of the mission. Give the job to two dumb dudes. Tell them to look out for a guy with an eye patch. My point is that Matt Smith ought to have engaged his inner Doctor Who and tardis this episode into the future where we should have actually seen something meaningful. The Queen Mum keeps telling Cole that this is their last frack and then keeps doing it. This is dumb, soapy writing, folks. Ironically, I couldn't tell the two Ratcatcher dudes apart this show risks being worth worse than game of thrones season eight he couldn't tell the difference between blood and cheese uh, that does appear to be the case they're literally opposites uh, <laughs> i mean it should realistically be episode one but you could be trolling me and this could be in like episode two review <laughs> yeah like it's so obviously an episode one review right you might be giving me a softball for the first one so i'll just say episode one you, I, I, does my cutthroat reputation not yeah. re precede me? This is an episode two review. For some reason, it's all about uh, the assassination, yeah. the things that happen in episode one. I love IMDb <laughs> reviews. It's great. Yeah, I did find a few that were like that. It's like, you're clearly talking about the wrong episode, sir. You're lost. <laughs> From AAMR, the best episode in the world of cinema. The best episode in the world of cinema. People were saying this sort of thing about episode four, I think. Like, they were really excited that there was a dragon battle. Episode seven also makes sense, but I'm going to say episode four. Why, why overthink it, you know? This is IMDb. Yeah, so if I underthink it, I'm more likely to get, it, <laughs> get the accurate result. Okay, you are correct. It is episode no four. No way. Yeah. So you got to get in the, in the mind of the mole people who write these reviews. Yeah, I thought I would throw you off. You would overthink it. Nah, I, I've spent enough time in this fandom to know when to underthink things. It's also kind of wild because it's like the best episode ever, but it's like clearly there's a lot of other much better episodes in like Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? <laughs> this is... Yeah, like I, I really did like episode four of season two, but like, come on, are we comparing it to Fire and Blood? Are we comparing it to Blackwater? Get out of here. Watchers on the wall? Fuck off. All right, I've got a review for you from user Bob Cobb 301 and Bob Cobb this doesn't it doesn't have a rating it's just an it's just words man sometimes you just got to put words on the page put rant. pen to paper and your soul lays bare on the page 
Bob Cobb says, maybe I'm misremembering the show a bit, but it did not seem like they made Damon such a huge focus of the first season. But here he is so heavily devoted to his mental health problems and backslide, and I really don't get the point of it. He's not as involved with the war as the other leads. Uh, so this could apply to almost the whole season. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... Um, there is one more paragraph if you think that would help. Oh, I'm assuming it's just going to be him ranting about the show being filler, but you can give it to No, me. It, Bob Cobb says, no major complaints, but I just keep thinking that the show could be so much better if we had some more action scenes or if we just had a little more intrigue around the day-to-day events involving this War of the Kingdoms, which I think is a pretty, you know, pretty measured critique of the season in general. Yeah, so this has to be in the last half, unless if he's complaining about Damon being like in episode three, like right away, which could be your mind game here. Or you could be complaining about action right after episode four, and it could be episode five. I'll go with episode five. Oh, you almost had me. It was episode three. Uh, I picked it because it was like such such an early place to say that about Damon's arc. I should have just committed to the Glidus mind game. Yeah, you have to underthink the review, but overthink me. That's the trick. This is really complicated because you have to decipher the reviews and then our <laughs> mind games on top of that. So this is yeah. um, chaos. Okay. Richter Photography. Worst episode yet. Clearly just trying to burn episodes and milk this for all it's worth. We learned nothing new and the storyline went nowhere. There are no new characters and no new action. I think this would be the funniest thing ever if this was a review of episode two. Because because it has so many like wonderful dramatic conversations that move the plot along and, and, and characters around in such dramatic ways that like I saw some reviews of episode two that were like this that just like somehow appeared to miss the entire point. Yeah, which is pretty wild. Half the episode is basically stacked with stellar dialogue scenes. Yeah. But you know, people, some people aren't looking for stellar dialogue. They're looking for flashing lights. I want Dracarys. Well, you can watch the spoils of war whenever you want, man. Um, <laughs> so or is it going to be later in the season? Because it's about milking the season for all it's worth, right? Milking the show for all it's worth. So it might be later on. One of the, like, you know, scantily paced episodes like five and six. I think five could be a good candidate for this. I'll say five. It is also episode four. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking the gloves off. (laughs) Why? (laughs) I believe this person just stopped watching it halfway through and just complained that there was no action. All right, I've got a short one for you. User Trident1745 gives this episode 10 stars and says, Give Fia Saban her Emmy. That's the Helena actress for everyone at home. Yeah. So obviously that would be episode one or two. Unless if you're mind gaming me and it's just like an episode she's not even in. (laughs) But that would be kind of unprompted from the IMDb reviewer. So it could be one or two. I'll just say one. But again, I'm applying logic and reasoning and assuming you're not mind gaming. But I don't see how it can Uh, be. You were close. Um, It was episode two, the other non-mind gaming option. Yeah. That was a 50 Although you're right. If like if that was a review of episode five where she just stands in the corner and says one line, that would be f- so funny. It's like, what a great <laughs> performance. Wow. All right. This is a this is quite a doozy. The Mr. Graves says, I don't feel like any of the actors took any of their lines to heart. When they talk about thousands of people dying, it's like they talking about ordering some McDonald's or something. Um this could be episode eight or potentially four. But it could also be your trick outside review. Yeah, we have yet to play that card. I don't see... I mean, that's. I've never heard that criticism before. There were, like, the occasional people complaining about the acting, which felt pretty surprising to me, because, like, that's kind of consistently one of the best aspects. I saw someone complaining about Reese Fan's performance. Isn't that incredible? That's crazy. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to look like a fool and say that this is your outside review. No, this is episode eight. Damn. You were on a hot streak. I finally stopped you. Or wait, no, I was, had, yeah. Or no, you only got the first two. I'm, I've still yet to score at my own game. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a tough one. It's a tough game we're playing here. 
User Posey fan gives this episode six stars and says, lots of plot elements and characters were combined in this episode. I can see why they thought it was a good idea, but everything felt a little rushed and disjointed. So rationally, this will probably be the slowest episode. I'm going to call you very early. This is episode five. All right. This is a review of Avatar The Last oh. Airbender Omashu. Oh. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> why <laughs> i need was... to make that video man <laughs> yeah you need to make the spending video when is that coming out um when i get a free couple of months yeah how long is it going to be <laughs> i think it, it long a whole season piss take that's a lot yeah exactly zrfgfcx says the most common way of getting to the bottom line of the story was to write the story in the story as it is in the story and it will aliwab you and your story and the characters and the characters in it to the point where they are all in the story is the same <laughs> as the main character and they are the most. I do not have a stroke. That's what someone said. <laughs> you almost made it through with a straight face. <laughs> How does it start again? Do you want me to repeat it? Just the just the beginning. Well, it's all one. I sentence. got the last bit. How many words do you want me to say? The first ten words, also, please. The most common way of getting to the bottom line of the story was to write the story. <laughs> <laughs> Man, why do we even bother writing reviews? Like that's that says it all, doesn't it? He's spot on. He's gonna get hundreds of thousands of views. <laughs> Roger Ebert is smiling in his grave right now. Oh, he's in a cloud of his grave and strangle ZRFGFCX. Um, because this gives like nothing away, I have like <laughs> episode two. Okay, well this is episode eight again. That was I. I that was literally <laughs> impossible yeah, was... to like. There was no information encoded in those words. The purpose of language is to communicate meaningful ideas between other humans, and I, I feel as though that's been besmirched today. Yeah, that's the kind of common theme here. It's a lot of crazy opinions. <laughs> that's what you get on IMDb user reviews, folks. User Hockey Wiz gives this episode 10 out of 10 and says, Excellent series. Love every bit. The plot well-crafted, the, the CGI remains classy, and the acting is superb. I love the way Iz pushes boundaries, which likely makes some viewers uncomfortable. Just close your eyes, you sensitive types. I'm sure the blood and guts and gore doesn't make you too squeamish. So this has to be in reference to the kiss in episode 6. Unless if they're referring to the first episode, A Son for a Son? I love that multiple times we're having to say, well, this could either be about two, <laughs> two, two ladies kissing each other, or it could be a child's decapitation. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of... It could be either. Uh, I'll go with episode six. Damn it! <laughs> there we go. I got it. I, I thought the blood, guts, and gore would, uh, would throw you off. He was talking about it in a general sense, so it seemed yeah. like it wasn't referring to something specific. Trina Boyce says, Watch Matt Smith's character carefully, and you'll even spot some similarities to Jim Carrey's character in the movie The Mask. Um, is, is this a review of Morbius? <laughs> Did we see the same review? Wait, wait, you called me out. This is Morbius. <laughs> what? That's crazy. No, I, I didn't look at Morbius reviews. I, I just found the Avatar one and went with it. Wow, I'm surprised you dead on got Morbius. That should be like extra. Well, I was like, you must have chosen, like, it says Matt Smith. So I'm like, I'm already dubious because it doesn't say Damon. And so I thought, well, Doctor Who? No, it's not Doctor Who. What else is Matt Smith in? Morbius? That's funny. <laughs> Supercuts would have gone with that. So I said Morbius. There you go. Um, user Daibei says, actually good, nine stars. It's refreshing to see a TV series that focuses on story and character development rather than re relying solely on action sequences. Um, it's a bit lengthy. How much more do I need to say? These episodes really delve deep into the characters' emotions and motivations, giving us a better understanding of their journeys. The one thing that stands out is that you said there's no action, right? Um, rather than relying solely on action sequences. This could be an episode four review. Um, it sounds pretty rational. It didn't sound like an irrational review. But just for the mind games, I'll say episode four. It's an episode five review. 
God damn it. I, I picked it because, like, it, it's a weirdly enthusiastic review of episode five, which, like, I haven't heard anyone say it's their favorite episode, but yeah, that one felt fair. like it was just really shooting for episode five. Yeah, which almost every view for episode five was just... It, there's just filler, 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 filler. Like, the amount of times I heard the word filler yeah. in reviews, like, I don't want to hear it ever again. I, I think these people need to watch more anime if they think that that was filler. BCX BBRFC says, This will be good. Season 1 through 6 was the best TV of all time, other than Breaking Bad. This series is starting to drift so far from the potential it had. What, Dan saved this series? Question mark? Start to move at a better pace while at the same time giving us more detail, plus more dragons. Um. <laughs> That's a lot to take in. This could be about a lot. Almost any of the episodes. And I feel like you've played the episode 8 card too many times. Or maybe that's a part of the mind games. Maybe that's the mind game. Maybe all, all of the all rest of yours are from episode 8. I honestly couldn't bother scrolling through all the episode 8 reviews. Yeah, there's um, like a thousand. I think I tapped out. There are a thousand of them. This could be an episode... I, I, I always gravitate to episode 2 and I feel like that's a folly. I think 5 and 3 are sticking out to me. If it's two, I'm gonna I'm gonna commit homicide. Um, let's say let's say three. It was five. That was close. Oh, god, god damn it! Those two they occupy such a similar space. I feel. Yeah. If you're playing the exact game we're playing right now, they're really similar, man. Just trust me. All right, user homie seven six nine four five says eight out of ten. Uh, the only uh, way I could see the picture is by looking in a window of a mirror in a mirror in a window in a window that has no windows or window frames or window frame in the, in, in the windows in a mirror and the windows in a mirror are the windows. The window in a mirror in the mirror. The windows even are a little smaller than they use. They're a little bigger than the ones in the picture, but they are still a little bigger and they're a little bigger in size than the ones I have seen in the past and are a little bigger in size. <laughs> the doors have the doors are smaller and they look a little smaller and I have a lot more space. Oh, is that it? That's it. I'm surprised we both have a very similar review. <laughs> <laughs> We're just an unhinged like copy pasta. <laughs> This could be episode eight because that's where I found mine and that's where everyone was at their like most angry about the series. Uh, I guess episode eight? That was an episode one review. Wow. Uh, that's surprising. I probably should have guessed that because I think you naturally gravitated towards the beginning of the season when you clocked my review of that one. That okay, might... I think you're too far in the mind games uh, now. <laughs> I'm going too deep. All right. Abbas Muhammad underscore CFC says, The story is progressing way too quickly. They should slow down and make the scenes longer. That's the only review I've ever seen where someone <laughs> oh, no. it was too fast. <laughs> so I oh my to god. That one. Is this a season one review? What are we talking about? They should just slow down. Okay, what episode could possibly be too fast paced? Um, one. Episode one. It was close. Episode two. The one time you don't guess episode two. <laughs> episode two is too fast. It feels perfectly what? fine. Like pacing I goes. thought like everyone agreed, like even the season's detractors would probably agree that episode two is pretty well paced. Yeah, I can see why you said one, because we're kind of jumping around a lot, but yeah. Yeah, episode one is a bit bang, bang, bang. Um, user Chef 74 gives this episode five out of ten. And he says, another episode in the boring season two. What did the Aegons going to do? Nothing. Will the public notice the different looking children? Not interesting. Can we see more low quality animation of too many boring dragons? Oh, yes. What was the name of that insignificant character whom I never cared about? I forgot. I don't even remember what the show was supposed to be about. <laughs> There's, that's a lot. That's a lot to take in. <laughs> Did he say the Aegons? The Aegons, yes. I believe he meant the Greens, but he said, what did the Aegons going to do? Uh, well, this has to be... Because he becomes incapacitated later, so this has to be one of the first, like, three episodes. Uh, he also complained about dragons. The, he complained about the dragons looking bad. Low-quality animation of too many boring dragons. I'm between two and three. I'll say two. 
This is an episode seven review. Oh, glad that's what he does to me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he complaining about what Aegon's doing when he's bedridden? I, I, you're gonna have to ask him, man. <laughs> Knife Magnet says, This entire season so far could have fit inside three episodes. This would be the funniest episode three review. <laughs> because, yeah, good point. <laughs> um, I'm going to say six. That was close. It was episode seven, but it would be an absolute banger for this really? like, episode four. <laughs> Damn, ep- episode seven? So that means cutting 50% of the show, basically, up until that point. Which is... But also episode two is too fast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sanjuro703 says, This is the best episode so far in season two. No, this is not sarcasm. While the writing in this season is pretty uninteresting and simple, as expected, this is an amazing fantasy world with a lot of potential. Instead of brainless dialogues and amazing fights, this episode actually gave a glimpse of what this series could be. It contains slightly more in depth development and works the viewer's imagination. He says so far, so I feel like it's indicating it's probably within like the first half. And he says no action, so it can't be four. I'd be leaning towards episode three, because I'd say that's arguably like one of the worst written episodes. So I feel like your mind game here is that he's saying the writing is great when that episode's arguably the most problematic. So I'll say three. This is an episode six review. (sighs) And I picked it because it's, again, like a a strangely enthusiastic review of what's considered like a pretty mid episode. (laughs) Yeah, it could be a lot. Okay, I guess this is my last review. Myth Youngs says, I can't even get over how exceptional the writing is and how amazingly faithful it is to George R. R. Martin's original masterful vision. I'd assume this would be a bit of a hot topic, so that'd be a fun review to decipher. I would love it if this were an episode eight review. That would be it. That would be good. <laughs> because no one thinks that. Um, well, it can't be episode one unless this person's just like not that familiar with fire and blood. This is also assuming they read the book. Um, four. That was close. It was episode five. What? <laughs> I don't know why. He's How? Like, it was a masterful like vision and faithful adaptation i was like i don't understand why he's saying this but i'm gonna throw it in because i'll throw glidus off yeah that's crazy user salvapu gives this episode 10 out of 10 and says solid episode i'm really surprised by all the hate except for the daemon storyline and that final scene the episode was great a lot of stuff happened laris showing his most vulnerable sign with Aegon, all the aemon scenes the king's landing riot sea smoke and adam adam and alan's relationship laris failing to manipulate aemon also that final kiss between mazaria and rhaenyra is was a was forced and the fact that it was emma's idea and the writers accepted it was dull but like i said before overall great episode this is a pretty elaborate mind game because this is clearly episode (laughs) six but you already played the card in the beginning where it was an illusion of an episode and it was the episode after so this could actually be episode six and you think i'd choose seven or eight (laughs) so i'm gonna go with episode six for the mind game (laughs) it's episode five what (laughs) oh yeah oh my god you are sorted by newest so they just review the wrong episode. There's so many wrong reviews. I just <laughs> I scrolled a bit too far. Yeah. So I'm assuming you're. I didn't keep count like at all. I'm yeah, assuming... neither did I. <laughs> I assume you beat me. I'd have to it, go I, back. I, I f- post. It felt like I beat you. <laughs> but yeah, this was a fun video, and I hope it was fun for you. I did have fun, even though you made me go to IMDb. Dot org. Yeah, this is made up for it. It was kind of worth this <laughs> utter slog of reading through those reviews. And not to downplay like criticisms at all. Like I'm pretty mixed on the season and I agree with some of these, but we're picking clearly the worst ones. But there were a lot of like rational, like highly upvoted reviews that were not really. Yeah, it them. was it was a little harder than I thought it would be to find the stupidest reviews. Have a good day, guys. Subscribe to both of our channels. I'll put Glidus' channel in the description as a link. And have a good day. Bye, everyone. Go outside. Brush your teeth. And touch grass and put grass in your teeth. Eat the grass. Don't put grass in your teeth. The silicates are really bad what about for the s- calcium. What about smoking grass? That's fine. <laughs> Smoke weed, everyone. <laughs> Smoke weed every day. <laughs> 
Thank you incredibly to my top patron, Logan Farmer.